guys, welcome back to the channel. I've been thinking uh, quite a bit recently about what cars you actually need for daily use in the UK because a lot of the stuff we see these days is ridiculously high power. And I'm just sort of thinking like, can you actually use half of that power? And probably not most of the time. We're sat in traffic, uh, the roads are very poor quality, they're small, um, obviously quite tight speed limits in places. So it just makes it hard to use that power. So that led me to think, do you really need anything more than a hot hatch? So we're back out in my uh, F56 Mini JCW today uh, on some nice roads. This car, as I've mentioned before, has a two litre inline four turbo. Uh, it's a single turbo, twin scroll, makes 231 horsepower and 236 foot pounds of torque. Nought to 60 uh, comes in about 6.3 seconds with the six speed manual and top speed is around 153 miles an hour. Um, so, I mean, I find that for daily use, this is absolutely perfect. It's got usable power, faster than most things on the road to be honest because as you probably know a lot of the stuff we have in the UK is just small hatchbacks so talking probably less than 100 horsepower most of the time so with 230 you're faster than most things on the road so it's quite good for uh, daily use if you want to overtake people and things like that it's got nice comfortable interior obviously these cars are made by BMW so it's high quality we've got nice materials um, and it's just generally quite a nice place to be but yet you can come onto nice roads like this and then this thing kind of comes alive a bit as i mentioned late last year i fitted this car with uh, michelin pilot sport fours which completely transformed it because um, it came on those pirelli uh, c7 chinterato run flats which just really weren't that great so after putting the PS4s on, uh, the power is much more usable and it just makes the car feel a lot more sorted. So what's it like on these kind of roads then? Well, we've got torque from literally about 1500 RPM and it just any gear, right? we're in fifth now and it's just instant torque, it's great. Put it into third, I'm gonna pitch it in here. There's not really much understeer. We've got quite a clever diff on this thing. It's basically an electronic diff. Um, it's managed by braking the wheels independently and uh, helping to pull that front end through the corners. So in weather like this, you can probably see it's raining quite a bit. It's February, so it's cold. There's quite a bit of salt on the roads. There's really not that much traction, but it's just so usable. So as you probably know, most hot hatches these days have the same sort of engine setups in them, which is two liter turbo inline fours, which, you know, it's, they work very well. I can see why people are using them. We just got that on power, just got that power on demand as you can hear there. It's just instantly, that's third gear. It's just great. However, inline fours, especially in my opinion, they're not the most interesting engines. They don't sound incredible, but you know, you can't really fault these turbo units these days. They're just very well set up dialed in for road use so i can totally see why hot hatches are using them again most of these small hot hatches have six speed manuals or well yeah generally six speed manuals um, a lot of the super hatches these days are switching to uh, different types of automatic gearboxes whether that be uh, dual clutch or standard automatics so for me the manual gearbox and a hot hatch it makes perfect sense you know it's that driver engagement it's what most people buy a hot hatch for it just keeps it exciting when you're out on the roads. So obviously having those two litre inline four turbo engines um, set up to those modern standards, they're, they're just great on fuel. I can get anywhere between 30 and 40 MPG using this on the daily, uh, sitting in a lot of traffic. And even when you go and take this to B roads and hammer on it a bit, it's still delivering 20 to 25. So you're getting really consistent economy and over in the UK where fuel, fuel prices are so expensive, it just makes perfect sense to have something that's like that. You don't want to be spending an absolute fortune every week trying to keep the thing on the road because then that just takes away from the enjoyment a bit. So as well as fuel cost, there's obviously just the general running cost of smaller cars. Everything's going to cost less. So tires are narrower, so tires are cheaper. Brake pads are smaller, so they're cheaper. So it just kind of makes perfect sense in the UK where things are more expensive to have something smaller like this, not to mention that it fits on the roads much better. We have pretty narrow roads over here and yeah, you, 
honestly, you don't want anything that's much bigger than a hatchback for daily use because it's just going to outgrow most of the roads you go on. I suppose the only really downside for me that I've noticed with a hot hatch is they're often set up for a firmer ride. Um, it, as I say, UK roads aren't great. We often have a lot of potholes and it does make it a little bit uncomfortable at times. However, these days hot hatches are very pliant actually and they can deal with multiple different road surfaces in really good ways and when I switched to Michelin Pilot Sport 4s that also helped just soften up that ride a little bit because you haven't got the rock hard run flats. Yeah so in my opinion I honestly think you, you just don't need anything more than the hot hatch for UK roads it just makes perfect sense you've got that performance on tap you've got fairly low running costs and you've also got something that is just versatile if nothing else. You can use it in traffic, you can use it on your commute, you can daily drive the thing with no issues, but yeah, if you want to go on a weekend or whatever and take it onto a nice road, it just it outperforms everything that's on there really. So yeah, I just it just makes perfect sense to me, not to mention they're generally pretty affordable, especially on modern uh, finance rates and things like that. So yeah, if you're in the market for a car that you want to use in multiple different situations, I would definitely recommend the hot hatch.